The purpose of business is not to make a profit. The purpose of business is to find profitable solutions to the problems of people and the planet. Conscious capitalism takes Milton Friedman's theories of shareholder supremacy and throws it out the window. Conscious capitalism has four tenets. The first being higher purpose, that is a purpose beyond money. The second is a stakeholder versus a shareholder format. The third is the culture. The culture will be authentic, trusting, innovative, and caring. And lastly, it needs to have conscious leaders, leaders that will honor the higher purpose, the stakeholder format, and the culture. Hi, I'm Bob, and this is Mike. And Bob and Mike, the acronym of that is BAM, and most of the organization refers to us that way. We started with one location in 1995 in East Lansing, Michigan. Thank you. On a handshake and a couple thousand dollars. By 1999, we were franchising, and by 2008, we hit 100 units, and MSNBC called us the fastest growing coffee chain in America. By 2014, we were nearing 200 units, but the wheels were falling off. You see, our concept was built on these cultural values. Be happy, have fun, make friends, love people, and drink great coffee. But it was all a farce. Michael and I were making more money, but we were breeding a culture of fear inside our organization. We had managers that were doing what we called midnight move-outs. That's a sticker on their desk that says, I'm leaving, don't call me. We had folks that worked for us for 10 years that when they came to work, they weren't really sure whether they would have a job the next day or not. And Mike and I were adding more zeros to our paycheck, but we were completely uninspired. We knew something was broken, and we had to fix it. We were wanting, we were searching, and we found our solution on South Manitou Island in northern Michigan. <laughs> I had taken my brother and my son camping, and on Saturday night, we were at the communal fire pit, and a husband and wife walked up to, uh, to, the, to the fire pit with us and sat down, and my brother struck up a conversation with the husband. His name was Nathan Havey, and he was talking about his work, his passion, which was conscious capitalism. I wasn't that engaged in the conversation at that point, but the next morning on the, on the ferry boat ride back to the mainland, I handed him my business card and I said, I'd love to learn more about this thing, conscious capitalism. And that's when conscious capitalism entered Bob's and my life. Nathan came to us and who was lovingly referred to at that point as the shaman in the woods, because that's where we met him. <laughs> and he came to us and he wanted to do an audit of the six stakeholders inside of Conscious Capitalism. And the six stakeholders are community, customer, your vendors, the environment, shareholders, and then your own employees. And when he finished that audit, we were passable in five of six, but we were failing miserably in one, and that was our home office people, our home office employees. And so Nathan did a deep dive survey with that group and he brought us that report. And when that report landed on my desk, I remember it like it was yesterday. I was sitting there in my home office, it was early in the morning. And I got about halfway through the reading the report and I was struck with sadness. I had tears, tears rolling down my face. I couldn't believe that an organization that I was responsible for, that the people were talking about it the way they were. 
So Bob and I had the moment of when we had to decide if we wanted to cross the Rubicon. Because Nathan's number one recommendation was that we get up in front of our group and we read that report word for word. If we did that, there would be no going back. We agreed, and that afternoon, <laughs> we, yeah, uh, we agreed, and that afternoon, we got up in front of our entire company, we read the report word for word through misty eyes and choked up voices, and we committed to make positive improvement. So, we had two tasks at hand to find our purpose and to find our vision. And it took us two years to find our purpose and our vision. We met the leadership team every Tuesday for an hour, and it was grueling. It was argumentative. It was full of debate and discussion. But in the end, we came up with our purpose. And our purpose is that Big B Coffee will support you in building a life you love. That comes with four measurables. The first, do you have a sense of belonging? The second, do you have emotional and physical vitality? Third, do you know who you want to be? And fourth, can you exceed your basic needs? So these weren't a lot of words for a year's worth of work, but they were really important words. It took us another year to get to the vision, same format. And our vision, our vision is that we will improve workplace culture in America. There is a lot of toxic workplaces in this country that causes chronic illness, alcoholism, domestic strife. And we believe we can change that. We believe we can change that by following our purpose. Because if we do support people in building a life they love, the folks within Big B Nation will be impacted, their families will be impacted, and their communities will be impacted. And we don't think it's a stretch, because we're good at scaling things, that if we grow as a company, let's say, to one billion, and that along the way that we track to make sure that, in fact, we are supporting people and building a life they love, and by the way, our metric on that is 90%, that the outside world would have to take note. And at that point, we would be improving workplace culture in America. So, we wrapped that up December of 2017. We high-fived ourselves, went home, did Christmas and all that business. And then a couple weeks later, Mike and I were doing one of our walking board meetings. And really, the gravity of what we just had agreed to came upon us. It was like a dead weight. And at that moment, we looked at each other and said, we have to change, our leadership has to change, and our company has to change. Yeah, I remember it, and it was fall, uh, sorry, February of 2018 yep. in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Yep. And the weight of that commitment forced Bob and I to make change so that we could seriously pursue the lofty ambition of our 2028 vision. And, you know, we've done some really cool things with that. Uh, we have developed a direct-to-farmer uh, uh, purchasing uh, for our coffee beans. And I'm proud to say uh, that in December, the first week of December, we have our first uh, beans landing in our stores uh, from the Zambia, which is a direct-to-farmer relationship. Bob has been traveling uh, the world and making relationships with different farmers. And the most exciting news is, is that we have committed to have 50% of the beans that we use in our stores in three years to be through the direct-to-farmer purchasing 
relationships. Yeah. That's awesome. We also have developed a, a, a coaching model inside of our company. And this coaching is not about taking an employee and making them a more proficient employee so they can be a more valuable asset so they can make Bob and I more money. This coaching is about helping them consider, think about, and pursue their passions so our company can support them, our purposes, so we can support them in building a life that they love. But why is this conscious capitalism thing so important to Bob and I? And why, why are we so deeply involved in it? It's because we believe it is the future. In 1962, Milton Friedman wrote, that the number one priority of the shareholder, I'm sorry, the number one priority of the corporation was to maximize shareholder value, essentially at any cost, as long as you were inside the letter of the law. This created a license for the wealthy to go on a 50-year joyride of wealth creation without limitation. That doesn't work. Our Milton Friedman Republic is not working. Thank you. I have a challenge to every CEO and investor in America. Should CEOs be worried about the short-term value creation they promised their shareholders this quarter and next quarter? Or should they be concerned about whether this planet is going to be inhabitable for their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren? <laughs> Conscious capitalism needs to unlock our brightest people and give them the resources so they can figure out how to make our companies, our communities, and ultimately our planet regenerative. We need to manage our physical resources. We need to treat our people in sustainable and fair ways so that we can all wake up tomorrow morning on this big island in space we're floating around on and know that we will be able to call this our home in perpetuity. That is, that is possible. It has to happen. And we're up here today to let you know that Bob and I and our company, Big B Coffee, is committed to that. So the purpose of a business is not to make a profit. The purpose of a business is to come up with profitable solutions to the problems of people and the planet. Mike and I are on a mission to make the word love as ubiquitous in the language of business as profit. And this conversation has been a debate between love and greed. And love is conscious capitalism, and greed is Milton Friedman. And we're on the side of love. And we hope you'll join us. This is Bob. I'm Mike, and collectively, we're BAM! BAM. There's one slide behind me. Thank you.